All right, everyone, we are in week three of our flooded online Bible study, and we're almost at the halfway mark. Yes. And well, it we has are. Been, yeah, we are. You're yeah. right. We're at the halfway mark, everyone, <laughs> so we can breathe a sigh of relief, which yes, is great. We made it this far. We've done two decisions. Mm-hmm. We have another decision that we're tackling this week. This one's hard. And so decision three is to rise above the doubt, mm-hmm. which is hard. Mm-hmm. Um, in just different things I've seen put out about Flooded Nikki, you say, like, please, God, no more hard things. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned in week one that you went through your mom passing away because of a tumor, your brother Mm -hmm. committing suicide, and then a pandemic, and all these other things that layer on top of each other. What would you say to the woman that has thought that? No more hard things. Like, what Mm -hmm. would you say to her to encourage her? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say it's okay to say that to God. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But the reality is, even though we whisper those prayers, Mm -hmm. um, there's always going to be hard things. Yeah. And we do go through, I want to recognize that I do think we go through seasons where it does seem like it's just extra Mm -hmm. hard. Um, I mean, we're always walking through something hard in our lives, but there's a perspective that God um, offers us through this message and through Noah that we're talking about. And, you know, so it's really about um, shifting our mindset, which I think we're going to talk about here in a second through our doubt diary but we really um, we get to decide how we look at life and what we see and um, it's okay to not always be okay but it's okay to, it's not okay to never not be okay yeah. you know so we've got to make sure that we're doing the healthy things to get yeah. us from here to there um, and remember that God is not after perfection he's mm-hmm. after our process that's good that's so good and that goes right into um, the doubt diary for this week who is by a dear friend of mine yes. her name is Ashley she is on staff with Proverbs 31, and she's going to touch a little bit on um, her struggle with anxiety and depression, and so let's hear from Ashley. Hi, my name is Ashley Jackson, and I am with Proverbs 31 Ministries. Something that I've struggled with for a long time personally is my mental health in the form of depression and anxiety. I know that a lot of people are with me in this battle, and it can be exhausting because we can pray for healing and We even try to explain it to our loved ones, but it's so hard to understand sometimes if you don't struggle with it yourself, and that can make it feel even more isolating. So for those who struggle with me and for me myself, what are some practical ways that we can really press into and trust God, even in the times when he says no? I love Ashley and I love her honesty. And so Nikki, what would you say in response? Well, thank you, Ashley, for being brave. Yes. Because we need more people to stand up and say, this is my struggle. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think struggling with anxiety and depression is a really, it's a real struggle. Mm -hmm. And I know there are thousands of people watching this today that could say, me too. Yeah. Me too. And, you know, uh, for sure I've had seasons, and I think you would say also that you've had seasons Mm -hmm. where, you know, fear and just not being able to pull out of those dark places. And we kind of talked about, you know, our first week of making the decision to seek out counsel and Mm -hmm. help and, you know, uh, going to our doctors. Listen, I'm all for, like, doctors and medicine and the Holy Spirit. Like, Mm -hmm. that's how I believe (laughs) God heals us. And so, you know there are times where we do need to seek out some help. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are are lots of resources out there for you. But I I wanted today, I wanna speak into that place where, you know, maybe this isn't really like an extended season Mm -hmm. where we're feeling this, but it's just these kind of moments, these pockets of time, um, which I think Ashley could identify with as well. um, Because it's not something that is just there all the time. Right. um, But it's something that does- ebbs and flows. Yes, ebbs and flows in her life for sure. So I think we can all relate to that. We've all had a really bad day. Yes. We've just felt sad. Completely and agree. We just want to watch Netflix and do nothing the rest of the day, yeah. right? Frequently, actually, <laughs> yes. I, I feel that. So yeah, yeah. So there's something really practical that I share in this week in the reading that you're going to do this week, and you know, I connect it back to a teaching in Matthew chapter four, verses one through five, that um, is really a time where Jesus had to really put Satan in his rightful place mm. through his words. Okay. And so we see that Jesus has been out in the desert and he has been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry. Yes. Like he was really hungry. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we see that Satan comes to him and says, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Okay, so I want to go back to this part where he said, but he answered, it Mm. is written. Mm -hmm. And so if Jesus had to put Satan in his rightful place, (laughs) you better believe that you and I are going to have to put the enemy in his rightful place from time to time, especially when we're working through our own doubt struggles. Mm -hmm. And so uh, on page 121 of the book, I talk about this idea about telling the enemy um, whatever feels like is being taken from you. So Mm. if you feel like, you know, depression is leading you to a place where your joy is no longer there, um, I list out that maybe you need to tell the enemy there's more joy where your joy comes from. And we can see in Psalm 28, seven, that the Lord tells us that he is the strength of our joy and the source of our joy. And so sometimes we've just got to remind the enemy. And then there's other times where, you know, when we're struggling with doubt and anxiety and depression, it just feels hopeless, right? Mm -hmm. Like we just really can't seem to find the hope in the situation. Well, Romans 15, 13 helps us find strength in telling the enemy that there is more hope Mm -hmm. where our hope comes from because Ultimately, God is the source of hope and strength in our lives. Um, And then today, like if you're just feeling really weak, you Mm -hmm. know, I have days and moments like that where, you know, you just wake up and just physically feel weak, right? Like we, we've been through a lot of hard months and past a year now of just really a hard season. Right. And our bodies are feeling that and our, our souls are feeling that. Yeah. And so, you know, I talk about how in Psalm 46, um, chapter 46, verses one through three, that sometimes we need to tell the enemy there's more strength where mm. our strength came from. And you can go through anything Just calling it out in your life today that feels like it is not there. Now, I want to be careful because I don't want you just to think that this is like a name it and claim it yeah. kind of gospel. That's good. That's yeah. not it. But Jesus did not come and die on a cross so that we would live in defeat. Mm. He came that we might have victory. And, you know, you and I were talking about this before we started filming, that sometimes the victory comes from hard work. Mm -hmm. And soul work is the hardest work because we don't want to do it right. Like we just want to read a a Bible verse Band-Aid and put it on our souls and, and make it feel better. But man, sometimes you got to walk around your house and Mm -hmm. you got to declare that your house is a house that is holy and anointed by God. And you got to, you know, tell those things that are, that are trying to take you down, that they've got to go in the name of Jesus. We have that authority and we have that power that Jesus gave us through the cross. And so it's time for the church. And when I say the church, I mean, all of us who Mm -hmm. love and follow Jesus to get our strength back. And I feel like this is a season through this message and through this struggle where God is strengthening us, but it's up to us to call it back out. So I would say, you know, thank you, Ashley, for sharing, you know, how hard this can be when it Mm -hmm. doesn't seem like God is coming through. And, you know, Ashley has been very um, open about her struggles and getting help and things like that. Um, And so I'm grateful for that process. And then I'm grateful for the process also where God tells us, you got to get in this and you got to put your boots in the ground Mm -hmm. and you've got to take back the joy and the strength and the hope that I have given you through Jesus. Yeah, put in some work. Yeah. Yeah, and see him work too. That's good, Nikki. Thank you for responding to that. Ashley, thank you for sharing. I've seen you live out this message for the past about two years that I've known you. And so it's been um, an honor to see you walk through it um, and just continue to see you put your head down and see what comes from it. So thank you. You. Yeah. Um, and Nikki, I love that you continually go back to scripture. You pulled out how Jesus also quoted scripture to mm-hmm. the enemy. Mm-hmm. And what I love about it is he knew what to say to the enemy and us, we too can learn what to say to the enemy by getting into the word. And like I said, Proverbs is a place that we love to do that together yeah. because we know when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. And we are excited to walk alongside you this week for week three of Flooded. Yeah.